Hi there! Hi there! You are now watching video review of From Video Gaming Files Gaming Reviews channel. This time I will focus on 90s inspired action platformer with a chubby underdog kid in the main role called Adventures of Grace. Is there any funny story explaining why you play for such an atypical main hero? Who is Chris and what's his motivation to go through the adventures full of dangerous situations? Does it play like typical action platformers from the 90s? Or are there some new features enhancing the gameplay? Is it as tough as the platformers from the 90s? Or can it also be played by casual players? Isn't the game ruined by clunky controls or uninventive level design? Are the audiovisuals rather reminiscent of the 90s or do they fulfill the request of the game from the modern era? Can it last for a long time or will it start to be repetitive quite soon? Let's find the answers to these questions together in my Adventures of Chris video review. So the story comes first. As I mentioned before, Chris is a typical chubby underdog American kid from the middle of the 90s who is on the way home to play some great 16-bit video games. He is almost back home, but suddenly some mysterious portal appears out of nowhere and sucks Chris into itself. And bang! He finds himself in the strange world that looks nothing like his hometown, but is rather reminiscent of Transylvania. Soon he arrives at something that looks like birthday party of a spoiled teenage vampire boy. And he is obviously not very friendly. Chris tries to fight with him, but the vampire has his magic tricks, so Chris loses and is turned into a human helium balloon. And there are also other kids kidnapped by the evil vampire boy that are turned into human toys as the gifts for the members of Society of Fiends that the poor little vampire desperately wants to join. I do not want to spoil the story anymore, so I'm just going to say yet yeah, that it's up to Chris to break his curse and to save all kids that are scattered to the different locations in the world. Each of them is a residence of one of the members of Evil Society of Fiends. Seems like a pretty dark story, doesn't it? But don't worry, Adventures of Chris is actually a funny game with a good sense of humor that makes you rather laugh than cry. I would say that the story is one of the game pros, especially in this genre, and is worth watching. But now let's take a closer look at the gameplay. Adventures of Chris in its core is a typical action platformer with a lot of jumping and fighting with the enemy creatures. First few minutes serve as a tutorial where you learn basic moves like jump or punch. However, this is only the beginning. Once Chris is turned into a human balloon, he gets the ability to fly. And with this ability, he gets to the empire of living balloons. This serves as some kind of central hub where you always get back between the missions and where you can upgrade your skills. You can buy a new outfit, you can choose between the standard one that gives you no special abilities, the one that causes you just to get damage instead of popping when you are in your balloon form and touching the door or some other sharp object. Then there is one reducing damage by 25% and the one cutting all damage in half and giving you unstoppable treatment. Then there are magical cakes, increasing your maximum magic or helium level, for example. What is it for? Well, as you progress through the game, you are getting magical abilities like fireballs or lightnings. However, they are not unlimited, so once you have shot the fireball, the bar showing the mana or something like this shortens, and after several shots, it gets empty. Then it is slowly refilled, so especially in the boss battles, you need to shoot accurately as not to get without ammunition in the middle of tough battle. As for the helium level, once you learn how to control inflating and deflating, you will be also able to inflate just once while in the air. If you want to inflate next time, you need to touch the ground first. However, you can increase the number of these in the air inflations by the magical cakes. There are several skills like bouncing or shooting and upgrades that you can either learn from masters that Chris meets as he progresses through the world map or buy in the balloons and park. This character development makes the gameplay variable and also helps the game not to become repetitive. How about the level design and game difficulty? As 
As for the level design, it's another one of the game problems. I have visited two worlds so far and they were completely different. The Mexican jungle with giant frogs and spiders and traps like giant rolling balls in Indiana Jones style or spears fired up from the floor finished by boss battle with a giant man statue and Los Angeles ruled by a smoke monster where you need to jump from one car to another while dodging the smoke clouds or bouncing across giant ventilators and fighting with toxic monsters. This one is finished by a quite tough boss battle with a smoke monster itself that I have not managed to win yet by the way. Level design makes you jump, fight and use your special abilities in a challenging yet not frustrating way and I have found it another of the game classes, which actually also responds to the questions of difficulty. You can expect challenging, but thanks to the good system of checkpoints and selectable level of difficulty, not so frustrating there. Except for the boss battles that might be frustrating sometimes, but you just need to remember the boss's moves and find the right tactics to beat. You can select from 4 levels of difficulty in the beginning, so I'm sure that everyone will find the right one for him or her. Adventures of Chris on the Xbox controller and I can say that the controls there are responsive enough. You do not need too many buttons, just the one for jump, punch, fire, inflating or deflating and their combinations to make you bounce or defend yourself by rotating in the air. The only complaint I have is that you cannot shoot a vertical direction while bosses like small monster can direct their shoots as they wish. This is the handicap making the game frustrating sometimes but it was probably made like this intentionally, so the boss battles are not too easy. Quite a controversial decision though. As for the game audio visuals, the graphics are nice, smooth and detailed enough and the game runs smoothly even on low specs machines. The variability of the environment also contributes to the graphics variability, so in each new world there are entirely different objects, enemies and colors. Well done! Music is not bad either and varies by the environment. You can find their typical jungle-like music while building in Mexico, by changes to faster music in the 90s or 80s style while being in Los Angeles. Only problem is that there are only a few music tracks, so the music becomes repetitive after some time. Some are simply as one would expect them to be, including quite realistic sounds of inflating or popping balloons. I was only missing some dubbing on the game characters, as the humorous dialogues would for sure deserve them. Is Adventures of Chris the right game to be played by fellow gaming fathers and their families? There are many things that I like about the game. Inventive story, sense of humor, system of skills and upgrades, variability of environment, good level design, optional level of difficulty, responsive controls and nice graphics. There are also some things that I dislike. Frustrating boss battles along with the inability to shoot vertically, lack of game modes, there is just a story, Absence of dubbing and also absence of local multiplayer that would make the game more suitable for family player. Adventures of Chris cost 12 and half euros on Steam, which makes the game not so cheap, but I would say that it's worth the price. In general, I have really enjoyed playing Adventures of Chris and I would not hesitate to give it even higher score if there were local multiplayer and dub characters. Like this, I'm giving it thumbs up and Video Gaming Fathers Index 8 out of 10. Recommend it. Thank you for watching this video review and if you have enjoyed it, please do not forget to give it a thumb up and also to subscribe to my video gaming files channel. Hope to see you soon again!